All right, so there's a lot of information that you can get out of Search Console. Um, I went over, in general, three big ideas, crawlers, search analytics, and sitemaps. I'm going to briefly, I won't mention every single screen, but I'll mention some screens here. Um, there's a messages screen. Whenever a number appears there that tells you there's a new message, you want to click there to leave the message because if there's problems with your site, if there's advice to improve your, your site visibility and such, you want to accomplish that because this is Google telling you this is what you need to do to get found on Google. So obviously pay attention to that. There's a screen of search appearance which helps you further understand your site and there's a little uh, item HTML improvements. So if there are things that could be improved about your site, if there's missing uh, text or pictures and such that's telling you right there, these are ways to improve your site. We've got a couple of uh, a couple of complex things called structured data and data highlighter. Uh, this is kind of a little bit more advanced than advanced that we have to talk about here, but basically the, the data highlighter, for example, have you noticed that sometimes when you do a search, some of the results appear more prominent or different from other results, like maybe ratings or maybe dates and such? Not every site ha even has this. Do I have upcoming sites on my uh, shows on my site? Do I have star ratings on, on, um, on products and such? Uh, using this feature, and there's a video to see to show how it works, basically what you're going to do is highlight and tell Google, here is a product of my site. Here is an event. Here is this special kind of data. So that when Google analyzes your site and sees, okay, this particular item right here is this kind of data, it can better show it when people search. So that is ra rather complex, and it does depend on your uh, your site, what kind of data it has. Search traffic. I was looking at search analytics before, but in a, another valuable section is links to your site. If you take the SEO class, we talk about that one of the most important things on your site is what are known as um, inbound links also known as incoming links, also known as backlinks, basically links from another website that comes to your website. The more of those you have, the better, because then the search engines see these other sites really hold this site in high esteem. They link to your site because those other sites think your site is valuable. Think about when you were writing term papers in college or high school or whatever, and you had to turn in a term paper of 10 pages, and you had to turn in with a page called Works Cited. If you turn in some sort of research paper, term paper, without any Works Cited, that paper goes in the trash, because you are not smart enough to have developed all of that knowledge for your paper on your own, unless you were Einstein, of course you have to have built upon the shoulders of giants for your 10-page paper. You, you researched this document and that journal and this trade publication and such, so you had to have work cited. Um, think of that like this. You are a works cited. You are getting linked from that page or this page or that site to your site because you're, you've got something valuable. So what we'll see here is who links the most and your most linked content. The main home page has the number one amount of links pointing to it from other websites. The second most linked is the, the blog post of The Amazing Legay Plant. Then the menu, then the article on Wheat Lakocha, then the history of Barbacoa. Those are the most linked to pages on this site. And the links are coming from, for example, yellowpages.com, foursquare, wordpress, trait.com. <laughs> and, what, and, and what keyword is being used on those other sites over here, on these over here? There was the keyword simply of website on these 
pages that linked back to this site or the history of that keyword there. And I can go further in for more detail right here. So this is going to tell me these are the different keywords that people are using on different websites to link back to this site. Order online. It's very popular. Book a table. If your website is international and you want to reach a broader audience, there's a, a section there about that, international targeting. Right now, it sells Mexican food, but it's in the U.S., so it's targeting um, an audience in the U.S. And so we can set all of this up here. If you are targeting multiple languages throughout the world, you would need to set that up, and there's learn more. Is your, is your website mobile friendly? What sort of mobile usability does it have? So here it shows this update means that there was a Google update. Google changes the algorithm. Google changes the way that it analyzes sites every once in a while. There was an update here. And that date, which was September 19th. And there were three issues regarding mobile. One of them has been addressed. Touch elements too close, small font size, flash usage, viewport not configured. So it's telling me perhaps these are some issues regarding mobile usability that I have to deal with. Like this, this one about flash, it's on this particular site. Those two pages do use flash, and flash is not mobile friendly anymore. Uh, most, most mobile devices don't run flash at all just on your desktop. So if you care about that, you have to deal with those two issues. They're not errors, it's just that for mobile usability, that could be a detriment. There's apparently a couple of those, that same thing there, the size is too small. All of those seem to be the same two pages. So those two pages could stand to be optimized a little bit more. But it's only two issues. Obviously, I've dealt with clients that say 20 problems, 90 problems. Those need to be dealt with. And we would usually want zero problems at all times. But that's not feasible sometimes, depending on the size and complexity of a site. But now that you have the knowledge, you can deal with the most glaring issues. Um, over on index, this is what I... what. Uh, this is another variation on that information. The index showing the data from last from the whole year. This is what content uh, Google sees. So overall, a year ago, it had seen 182 pages on your site, and now we're up at 241. So this is how you improve your SEO. You're always updating your content. You're adding stuff to the page. And I'm not saying frivolously just add pictures. Add content blog posts, new articles, new content that helps you get more visibility and, and traffic to your site. So in the grand scheme of it, little by little, it's increasing of content so when someone searches keywords, they can find you. And here's another screen about Google Index content keywords. These are some of the keywords that Google understands that are used most often on your site. It, analy it analyzes the site and it has seen menu and it has a high significance. People really care about that keyword on your site. They want to know the menu of what do you sell. What's your food? And then that keyword, barbacoa, book, a table, press, lamb, etc. So this, these are the keywords that Google is seeing on your site. Crawl errors, we've seen this screen, crawl stats. So here's just another way to see your information. Here's Google looking at your site day by day. 
how much data gets downloaded in kilobytes. So it's just showing the traffic. the speed of your website in milliseconds. So 1.3 seconds was the highest it took um, for something to download. The fastest was less than half a second and the average is about three quarters of a second for a page to download. If this was, you know, 12,000 on high, an average of 8,000, you could have perhaps a slow site. Because studies show that people are getting uh, shorter attention spans. And if that website doesn't load in 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 3 seconds, I get annoyed. That, of course, is a function of how many pictures you have and how much content. But overall, here, the faster we can get the site, so 3 quarters of a second, I think, yeah, the, the whole site loads in less than a second. But depending on your content, that might be too long, or that might be a great speed. Fetch as Google is a pretty useful screen here because what this will do is it will let you sort of simulate what your different pages look like. And here's how you tell Google also, we've added a brand new page. This is a faster way to tell Google there's a brand new page on our site. We add the link there, we fetch it, and Google says, okay, now I know about your site. Here we've got the main site set up. It's been looked at it as the desktop. It still needs to be further analyzed as other, other things like mobile and such. analyze the site as a mobile platform. So as you go through all of these and you fetch it, then Google understands more about your site, the better. Robots.txt is a little bit out of our scope, but this is a file on your server that basically tells Google, don't look at these, at these directories they're not necessary, like this directory full of scripts and such. And so um, on this you cannot edit it, you can just test it. So again, it's kind of technical, you have to edit this file and what's it called? Robots.org Robots.txt.org To get more educated on this, which is an important aspect of web design and SEO robots txt.org. Um, this is a simple file. It's not like the XML sitemap. This is a simple file that every web sh website should have, especially when we're trying to tell the search engines, don't look in this folder. It's not relevant. It's not important. Uh, Google will try to look at every folder in your site, but some you don't want it to look into because it's not relevant. It could have sensitive information and such. And so creating this file and uploading it is a way to tell Google don't look in this folder. This also works on most of the search engines. Bing will also adhere to this and Yahoo and and, and AOL search and all of that. I mean, sorry, is there a reason why that Google wants Google to look at these pages? Yes, for example, here's some of these here. CGI-bin, this is a, this is a directory full of scripts that don't, you know, coding for the website that doesn't matter to Google. There's no person that's ever going to want to look into that folder. This is just, you know, code that shows up on the site. And then this one about application, well, that's not for regular people. That's where a person can apply to work there. So we're telling... Yeah. So, uh, so this is a page that we... A file? Yeah, on the folder that we don't want Google to go and see. see exactly. Robots.txt.org uh, uh, explains how to set one up, and it's super easy. You can see, you can see examples, how it works. You're just going to write very simple text, user agent. You're saying which search engine. 
the asterisk means all of them. All of the search engines disallowed. Don't let any search engine visit the root of my site, which basically is hiding your website from the internet. But more specifically, they give examples of doing different things like right here. Every search engine, don't let it go into this folder, that folder, and that folder. It's just a plain old text file. You upload it to your server, and then you're telling the search engine to look in these folders. I mean, I don't have this yet on my site. I mean, so now on my site, then it like, really could go into like, really It could be. Things, really. Exactly. It's like you have the, you have, in a way, you have the front door open. Mm -hmm. So here, you'll be able to lock that door. Okay. <laughs> There's the screen of sitemaps again. And then security issues. So if there's any problems with the site, you can check the security issues. And lastly, other resources. Other resources is useful because then you've got page speed insights. You can have Google analyze how fast your, your website is and tell you what the slow parts of your website are. You can go to the... Um, Structured data highlighter, email markup tester, test if your email, uh, if your email using HTML is properly set up. If you have a real business that you then want to show up as a business on Google, there is the Google My Business. If you're selling products, that's some good information. And then of course there's the Webmaster Academy, which is a huge website full of a lot of documentation and tutorials and steps on what to do. And Google sells domains as well. I read an article a few months ago that for about like an hour Google lost the google.com domain. There was some sort of transfer going on and for about an hour some regular guy owned google.com. <laughs> Now, this regular guy was a previous Google Plus employee, and he, w he knew that this transfer was about to happen. He said, what would happen if I try to buy the Google.com? And he bought it for $14, <laughs> and he owned it for like an hour. And then he told his bosses, hey, you know, there's something wrong here. And then they fixed it, and now he doesn't own Google.com anymore. <laughs> but that is just like hijacking a site, right? It is. So depending on how mean the bosses could have been, they could have said, you hijacked our site. Here comes our lawyers. Here comes the police. But it turned out okay for him. So he broke down and sold it back? He could have sold it back, but what they did was they just kind of canceled the whole transaction. So he never really owned it, in uh -huh. a sense. For fun, I used to own the domain. Uh, how did I spell it? Uh, I think it was three O's and three E's or something. I used to own Google.com, like that. Yeah. Google. <laughs> but that was just uh, that was just fun. What did you do with it? Nothing. I, that was you know I was gonna I was gonna put you know a parody of Google or something, but I never got around to it. And then. It, it was time to renew it, and I said, oh, never mind, I don't want it. And I only bought it for like $6. Uh, I didn't really do anything with it, um, but just for fun. Because <laughs> if, you, if you can spell it. So for a time, I was really interested in like domain names that sounded like domain names. You know, so instead of Microsoft, you know, Microsoft. Right. So I could say, yeah, I've got, I've got Microsoft.com. Is it my site? Obviously, that's sort of like people are not going to accidentally type Microsoft, but <laughs> so does Microsoft work? Nope. It's uh, well, someone apparently someone owns it, but they're not doing anything with it. <laughs> That's what a lot of cases is. A lot of people own stuff, but then does it at the end. 
Yeah, there's just so much cyber squatting. It's so annoying. You know, in the real world, if, if a house gets abandoned and someone lives in it, unofficially they have squatters' rights and then they might, the court might say, well, you've been living in it enough long, you can keep the house. In the, in the digital world, people make some business just going to companies like GoDaddy and, or Bluehost or whatever and buying a bunch of names in the hopes that maybe one day the legitimate owner of that will make a deal with them to sell them that name. And I think that's so annoying, but it's, it's going to be, yeah, and it's, it, it's... They mentioned they have to, they want to have to do some kind of clearinghouses of all these different uh, names that they want. These names, you can buy them for $7 a year. So if someone's got a spare hundred dollars a year, they can buy, you know, seven domains and hold on to them for five years. It's, uh, it's really annoying. Um, there was this one, solarway.com, like seven years ago, a lady came to me that was going to start a business. I guess eventually they finally gave it up. That site right there was claimed by a cyber squatter for like six years. And every year I would get a notification that it's about to expire. But then the squatters renewed it again because it's just twelve dollars, and then I, I don't know when it happened, but apparently this is the first time I look at it. Someone apparently legitimately either were fast enough to buy it, or most likely paid like two thousand dollars to get that name. And because you know SolarWay.com, that's a common enough terms that people want that. And if they're selling these products, and it seems like you know they've they've got a worthy cause, I hope they didn't pay a lot of money for it. But unfortunately, these people they buy a bunch of names that might be hot one day, and then mm -hmm. sell them to people. That's true. Speaking of domain names, Fixter.com does that exist still? Fixter. Um, Netflix. I don't know if this is the official Netflix property anymore, but um, Netflix a few years ago. Netflix, they were doing some reorganization and such, and what they wanted to do was spin out the DVD rental arm of their business and the streaming arm. So they had the great idea to have Netflix.com for like the streaming or something, and then Flickster.com for the DVD. That caused so much confusion and cancellation of the service. And the funny thing was, Netflix never researched that name enough because the person nowadays a company has a website and a Twitter and a Facebook and all that social media, and with that same brand name throughout. Netflix apparently didn't do their research to see that someone already owned the Flickster Twitter account and it was run by like a pot-smoking teenager. And so when the news broke, Netflix is going to open Flickster and when the traffic went to twitter.com slash Flickster, it was going to that kid's account with all of these weird crazy things and they're like, this is Netflix? What are they up to? So they didn't do their research. But the Search Console here gives you all of this information. Once it's set up, it'll start to collect your info. Unfortunately, it cannot go back in time and give you information from something that happened before you set it up. It starts to collect from this moment. So the sooner you set this up, the better. So it can collect your information and you can deal with your data. And like I said, I, I won't go through every single screen because you don't get much out of it unless you've got data to work with. I'm going to change gears in a moment, but uh, any questions then on the Search Console that we've been talking about all day?